Hello. So in this video, we're going to be talking about rational functions and specifically whole discontinuities. So again, uh, in terms of classifying domain restrictions and in particular discontinuities, uh, like holes and vertical asymptotes, the real analytic tool you need is limits. We don't have that until calculus. Nonetheless, holes are actually much easier to classify in a more conceptual approach than vertical asymptotes were. So again, in general, and this is, uh, again, the, the sort of hand wavy part of it. In general, this holds a rule of thumb, but it's not always the case um, because you need limits to be sure. But in general, if a domain restriction can be removed by simplifying, it is a whole discontinuity. Now there are other whole discontinuities, but to find those you really, really do need limits. There's not really any nice way to see that that's the case without limits, um, not even in a hand wavy way. Uh, and for that reason, we're not gonna be dealing with those in this pre-calc class. Again, for that reason, you will be doing that in calculus, but that's for your calculus class to deal with. So again, like before, it's one of those things that's just easier to sort of go through an example. And in fact, I'm gonna use R of X to be really the same one that we did in the last video with uh, vertical asymptotes. So again, pretending that we already did all of the annoying simplification to get here, let's say we have this as our, uh, not simplification, excuse me, all the annoying uh, factoring to get here, then our domain is x cannot be, right, so polynomial on top and bottom, so no restrictions for the top and bottom functions, but the bottom can't be zero, so it can't be negative one, negative two, or negative three. And then once I have my domain, I can go ahead and simplify the function, which I can do the same way I did before, so the x plus ones cancel out, one of the x plus threes cancel out, I'm gonna get x minus two, x plus three in the top, over x plus two in the bottom. Here, uh, we saw in the last video, um, there's a vertical asymptote at x equals negative two, right? Because if we tried to plug in negative two, even though we can't because it's a domain restriction, but if we sort of hand wavy tried, uh, we would get something non-zero over zero, top and bottom both continuous. So it is, that's what's gonna give us a vertical asymptote. The whole discontinuities, though, are what happens to the other things. So negative one and negative three no longer appear to be vertical, uh, no longer appear to be domain restrictions. So what I do is I need to test this um, because I may just not see that that is the case. Um, there might be like weird factors in here that end up making it happen, although this is a very nice example, so that's not the case. Um, but there's also another reason to check, which I'll explain in a second. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug it in and see what happens. And since it's no longer a domain restriction, this actually should, assuming it really isn't a domain restriction in the simplified form, really should compute nicely. So if I do that, I'm gonna have negative one minus two, so that's gonna be negative three. Negative one plus three is two, over negative one plus two is one, and that is negative six. Right, there's no over zero or anything, so it worked out. Uh, R of negative three. So I'm gonna get uh, negative three minus two, so that's negative five. Negative three plus three is zero. Over negative three plus two is negative one. So again, not over zero, so it's good, but zero times negative five is zero, divided by negative one is zero. So since it worked in the sense that I got a nice number, there was no dividing by zero or craziness, um, that tells me that these are holes and thus, so let me write first, thus there are whole discontinuities 
at x equals negative 1 and x equals negative 3. And here's why we still plugged it in, even though we could sort of just look and know. And it's because, moreover, the y value of the holes, because remember, what a hole is, right, is if, if a hole discontinuity occurs, if we have some weird you know, function graph and we're missing a particular point, right, at a point, meaning an x, y value, right? So a whole discontinuity has the x value, just like an asymptote, but it also has a y value because it is a missing point. And so it makes sense to talk about the y value of the whole. And the y value of the whole is the uh, associated uh, output. Meaning, um, we have the whole, so we have a whole at negative one, so we have a whole negative one comma, and the actual thing we got when we calculated it, negative six. And likewise, we have a whole at negative three, and the output, which was zero, is the y value. These points are whole discontinuities, okay? So finding whole discontinuities, it's the same process as the vertical discontinuity, right? The vertical asymptote discontinuities, um, or the infinite discontinuity, depending on which one you like to say, where essentially you start out by uh, finding the domain restrictions, which usually involves factoring, so you can find when the bottom is zero. So you write down all the domain restrictions before you do any other simplifying, then you actually simplify it, and generally speaking, if the bottom is still zero at your domain restriction, it's probably going to be a vertical asymptote. And if the bottom is not zero, then it is probably going to be a hole. I say probably because um, if the top is still zero, excuse me, if the top when you evaluate it is a zero and the bottom is a zero, you still don't know what it is. So if you you can't just say that because the bottom is still zero that it's a vertical asymptote because if the top is not uh, zero, or sorry, if the top is zero, you still can't figure it out. And sometimes you just can't simplify away the zero more um, if, it's not a, if it's not a polynomial, for example, and that's where you need limits and calculus and the whole you know, shebang. Uh, for holes, though, if the bottom is not zero anymore, then that's definitely going to be a hole, um, regardless of what the y value is. But the y value is important because that tells you the y value of the whole. And that's what it's going to be. You know, that's usually what we actually want when it comes to whole discontinuities is the actual full point, the x and y value. Okay? So that is whole discontinuities and thus classifying discontinuities of rational functions.